Hello again folks, welcome along to another video to how far to row ever reached everyone's fishing perdigons. Perdigons, perdigons, that's why we hear perdigons. So, in keeping with that, today I'm going to tie one of my favourite perdigons and then we're going to go fishing. So be sure to join me for that. In the meantime, I want to talk a small bit about perdigons. Developed apparently by the Spanish national team. They've now become universally popular. So, they come in a range of guises. Um, I've experimented with a few of them and I now have a couple of favourites, one of which I'm going to tie now. So um, here it is. Okay folks, the tying of um, the twin wire paragon nymph is probably one of the easiest tasks in fly tying. For such an effective fly they're just so easy to make. So I'm using here a size 14 jig hook and I'm now putting on um, a three millimeter tungsten copper bead. Now the make of the hook in this case is Fastener, but any jig hook from any, any manufacturer will basically do the same thing. The tying thread I'm using is a uni thread in red 80. And I start off here behind the bead, tie right, real tight up to the bead, trapping it in place. Plenty of wraps here. And then I'm gonna head down along and to create the typical conical perdigon shape. Now, this is blue down hackle. I'm gonna make the tail from that. I'm going to pull out about maybe six or eight fibers. Now the tail on the paradigon is typically uh, either the same length or slightly longer than the body. So I'm going to make it just that little bit longer than the body. Tie that in there. Small little trim just there. Now I'm going to up along again and create that conical shape and back down here. Now the two wires I'm going to use to create the twin wire perdigon nymph are um, this is ultra wire hot yellow and I have hen's wire in what I can call, only best describe as probably bottle green. And uh, it's a good idea when tying twin wire nymphs to use contrasting colors. And I find these, these two particular colors to be um, very, very good. They create, I suppose, an olive impression when the two are used together. So now, two wires. forward here again. Now the two wires what I do is I poke them into the uh, slot in the bead which will hold them in place and then come back along keeping the two wires on top of the fly on top of the hook. There. And now I'm moving forward again and as you can see that sort of typical conical shape is forming. Now with the two wires in touching turns moving forward. And just right behind the bead. Tie them in. Trim off the two wires. And now just a quick whip finish. I've misplaced my whip finisher momentarily, so I'm just going to do it with my fingers. Just a couple of turns, just to hold everything in place. And we'll do that again. Now, much easier to do a whip finish with a whip finish tool, but I've just left it out of my hand. I can't find it at the moment. Now, next. UV glue. Uh, in this case I'm using Gulf glue. 
it's a little bit tacky in my opinion it doesn't flow very well it's it's a little too tacky and um, makes it difficult to um, spread evenly on the fly so what I have to do is uh, sort of try and spread it around with a needle I actually have um, different glue but from a different manufacturer on order and that is um, it flows much more easily so it'll make the job easier the next time around I have a little bit of a uh, something sticking down just there so I'm just going to cut that off yeah. now as you can see that has a particularly nice olive color the mixture of the two wires together has created a really nice olive impression so now all that remains to do is hit it with the UV light and that's it folks that's your twin wire perdigon nymph simplicity itself anybody with any modicum of um, experience fly tying will easily be able to do this and a complete beginner will find it very easy as well so that's it that's the uh, twin wire perdigon nymph in the, with the olive make lovely olive impression and i'm now going to tie uh, another four five maybe even half dozen more of these and then i'm going to head to the river so i hope you're going to stay with me for that so be sure to stay tuned and i'll show you how effective this little fly can actually be Now I'm on my way for my um, Perdigon adventure and um, I've been joined by the brave Dahi. <laughs> Say hello Dahi. Here we go again, 2021 have, season. Have you, ever, have you ever been on a Perdigon adventure before? I Is have. this your first Perdigon <laughs> adventure? <laughs> Is it me? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a bit of fun at the river today so um, be sure to stay tuned. Dahi, while you're um, putting on your flies there, I'm going to make the first few exploratory casts. So, here we go. Yes, first one. a big fish but they're all welcome okay and off he goes inevitably you'll get stuck on the bottom sometimes that means that the, the nymphs are fishing in the right area. Yo! Beautiful fish. Yeah, 
Yeah. Lovely. Oh! They're coming thick and fast now. What a beauty. Yo! <laughs> Whoa! Beautiful fish. Yeah, come to that. Oh yeah. He's a little bit thin after the winter, but he's lovely all the time. Okay, um, the setup for um, fishing these paradigons, um, I have on the point really heavy size 10. Um, built with lead wire into the body as well. And to fish the 14 that I tied, um, that you saw me tie earlier on, I attached that onto a dropper, which is about only maybe two feet away from the heavier one. That will drag down the smaller one, which I find you catch the most fish on. So you need to get the smaller fly down, and the big fly obviously aids that by dragging it down into the, um, where the fish are at. So that's how I tie it up, it's not necessarily how everyone else does it, but I find that works for me. So they're just basically about a foot and a half, two feet apart, and that serves me very well. So um, I'm going to give it another cast now and uh, hopefully get another couple of fish. Very fast current. Yep. And a strong corn kernel as well. It's a little, little bit of extra depth made the difference. Nice throw. Healthy throw. Got a nice fish on here now, Dahi. Well done. Fairly gone. 
Already gone. <laughs> I thought you had a nest, but it seems to have disappeared. Oh, nice fish. Beauty. Nice trout, yeah. Yeah, lovely fish. Good condition. Yeah, put him right down onto that. That's it. Off he goes. Beauty. Beautiful. Hurting on strikes again, huh? Lovely. Dahi's into another nice fish here. Putting up a bit of a fight, isn't he? Nice trout. Yep. That's a good trout. Turning on strikes again, Dahi. Yeah, he's a beauty, yeah. That. Lovely fish, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's a lovely trophy. Yeah. Here we are, folks, back from the river. <laughs> bacon and cabbage. Yeah. Hard to beat the bacon and cabbage. He's going to have a horse. <laughs> um, fishing wasn't as good as we thought it might be, but we did catch a few fish. Proved that the perdigons work. What do you think of the perdigons, Danny? Oh, we had a great day. Uh, well, I enjoyed it, um, irrespective. We, got, we did get fish and we got some good quality fish. So the perdigons fish very well. Yeah, so I broke a fly line, first time ever. Been fishing a long time, I never broke a fly line. I got caught in a tree, pulled it, and the fly line snapped. So that kind of put me out of commission for um, Euronymphon, if you like. So we packed up at that point, and we're back here now, and uh, we're enjoying our bacon and cabbage. <laughs> Dahi's a savage for bacon and cabbage. And that's the fact. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, folks, appreciate you joining us um, on the river and while we're having our dinner. And um, be sure to subscribe because we'll have plenty more videos of the during this fishing season and um, once again thanks and good day on Cain O'Reilly Good day Shiv Sloan and good day Shiv Sloan